Hello friends and welcome back. My name is Megan and I'm an illustrator and handcraft artist and this is my YouTube channel where I create art related content. Today we're deviating a bit from my typical studio vlog content because I wanted to change it up mainly because I wanted to branch out the kinds of content I do here on YouTube and vlogging has just been making me a little bit tired. Actually, I don't think it's so much the act of vlogging rather than the editing part. It takes me about one and a half days of editing straight, like all day to finish a studio vlog. And while I love editing and making them, I think I just needed a bit of a breather. And I also love watching draw with me and paint with me videos. I recently watched Radia's draw with me video as well as Lee's draw with me video this week. And I also love watching Cheyenne Barton's content that's like draw with me, paint with me. And I was like, I'm gonna do that too. <laughs> and I think it's something about seeing an artist's process and also getting to hear their thoughts in this longer form podcasty style way. And it's just nice to have that company while I'm doing things like drawing or packing orders. So whatever you're doing right now, whether that's drawing or painting or working on something, or I don't know, even washing the dishes, I hope that this video can keep you some company while you watch me paint some tiny gouache paintings. And you know, if my voice isn't your vibe right now, that's okay. You can just mute the video or maybe even turn on something that you do enjoy listening to. I have a Nintendo Animal Crossing playlist that I uploaded a while back. You know, maybe you can listen to that in the cards. Or if you're one of those people that just likes to do things in pure silence, you know, do that. <laughs> uh, I have never really talked for like 20 minutes with no questions to prompt me. So I wrote down some rough topics that I want to touch upon today. And hopefully the talking flows nicely and it's not too choppy. But I wanted to talk about all things art and just things I've been thinking about personally. So I wanted to talk about finding your art style and the idea of going through different phases. I wanted to talk about growing on Instagram because I've seen a lot of growth lately. I wanted to talk about traditional versus digital art, having fun and liking your art, as well as what's going on for my next shop update and just catch you all up on what I'm going through right now and the phases of art that I'm currently entering and growing out of. So I started making this gouache painting, or these gouache paintings rather, because I wanted to switch it up. I was scrolling through my Instagram feed the other day and I just felt kind of stuck. I know it might not seem like that, but to me, I was just scrolling and looking at what I've been creating lately and sort of felt like everything kind of looks the same. I know there's variation and I know that it might not seem like that on the outside, but I might, I think it is just my brain telling me I need to make some changes and just try something new because also in general, I've been feeling a lack of inspiration lately as well. Uh, I don't really know where it comes from. I think art block can be really complicated and sometimes just an indication that I need to take a break. But I also think my art block can stem from when I'm looking at too much of other people's art and just not letting myself let go and have fun. Uh, I really love engaging with artists on Instagram and meeting people and reacting to their content. But I find that when I'm looking at it too often, I kind of feel like my sketches are just derivative of their styles or what they draw inspiration from. And it just wasn't feeling like me, if that makes any sense. And I started thinking about how I've made art in the past. And before I started posting my art on this Instagram account in and around June of 2020, I had always been creating and going through various style changes and growth. I actually used to make very large, well, not very large. They were, they were pretty, pretty, medium-sized um, abstract landscape paintings and I'd make short little three-word poems and it would be a way for me to express what I was going through at the time and help me cope with hard emotions and life challenges and I think as I started getting into illustration and making art to sell and clay pins and such my art started to hone in on a cuter style which I think is amazing because you know here's a tangent I think people who don't like cute art and call it not real art like I just disagree with that I think quote unquote cute art it takes a lot of skill and practice to design things that are cute and happy looking and inspire those emotions in people but anyways I haven't made um those larger abstract landscape paintings in a while and I remember in early quarantine I also made a few landscapes using paper cutouts and I started getting, at the time, I started getting inspired by Chinese traditional watercolor paintings or guohua. And I was just doing a lot of fun experimentation. And I'm obviously still experimenting with clay and making jewelry now, but I wanted to try to paint something just 
from the heart, as they say, like I used to do more often and I really enjoyed it and seeing what came out because I feel like it was just a cool mesh of the landscapey style that I used to do mixed with a bit of the illustrated look I have been trying to hone lately. I think I inadvertently put a lot of pressure on myself to have a consistent art style because I want to have a voice with my art, but I miss just having fun and creating just for the sake of it without worrying about her, how certain things will be received and how quote unquote well it will do on the algorithmic side. And when I think about the changing phases of me making art, it does affirm this belief I have that art styles can be phases and you can transition in and out of particular art styles just based on what you're into, what is inspiring you now, and so on. I'm interested to see where I go next. I want to continue making jewelry, but for my next drop, which will be in mid to late March, I believe, I've developed some designs I'm super excited about. They're all really speaking to me right now. Like I feel, when I look at them, I feel like, okay, that's me. And I also didn't film a studio vlog this week because I wasn't really doing anything that interesting. I was figuring out tax stuff, very boring, and doing other boring admin related things like ordering supplies for earrings and, you know, checking which prices are the lowest but which quality is the best and packing mailers and planning out the update. And I was like, counting all my earring supplies so i just took out the hooks and counted them one one by one it's like this is no one wants to see this and i also had no idea what designs to do for my earrings so i couldn't start making them but i think it was last night or the night before i was about to go to sleep and i suddenly had like a stroke of inspiration and i really i'm really excited to share them with you all next week because i'll be experimenting a lot with fun shapes and colors and beading and I'm really excited and happy that my little art block slash rut has passed and I feel really inspired and excited to get to work. Making these little paintings was a lot of fun too because I didn't really plan anything, I just went into it head first and I think making myself do that took a lot of the pressure of having things be perfect and presentable. I also thought about allowing myself the chance to make mistakes and make art that I didn't love and the act of making the art itself was what I was going for, if that makes sense. I used to say this really cheesy thing a few years ago, that art is about self-love. And honestly, to an extent, I still, I still think that. And what I meant was that sometimes I'll make an art piece and I'll just absolutely hate it and then start directing a lot of negative self-talk, which is just so unnecessary. And I would tell myself, no. Art is about self-love to encourage myself to think, okay, sure, it's not my best work, but it's okay because I made this piece and it came from my imagination and I created it and I brought it to life and I love that for me. <laughs> and it would help me cope with these reactive feelings of, no, this art is so bad and I suck. And, you know, we're trying not to have these negative thoughts about ourselves in 2021, okay? Life is already challenging enough. So painting this felt nice because in the back of my head, I told myself, Okay, whatever this looks like, whatever. I'm making it and that's enough for me right now. And at the end of the day, I think I actually ended up liking the pieces more because I went in without a bunch of reservations about proportions and color and style. And I sort of just went for it and let myself naturally lay it out and come together. And throughout this video, you're gonna see me like make mistakes and cover stuff up with darker paint and you know, even towards the middle of the video, I, I show you how I edit things in Lightroom and then put it back on my iPad and then cover more stuff up. And I honestly think I used to have this weird stigma in my head that okay, digital art is digital art, traditional art is traditional art, and I can just only do one or the other. But I think mixing them is totally fine. And I also think people, <laughs> some people just have this like, vendetta against using procreate in digital art which i just simply don't understand like people should be able to use the tools that they have accessible to them and if it works for them you know it works for them i don't know i feel like every few every few months on twitter i see this weird floating discourse around that's like oh f this super flat corporate art style flat art and digital art sucks and procreate procreate makes everything easy you know like traditional art is is the hardest and the most worthy kind. It's just like, where are these people coming from? <laughs> um, I personally really love mixing things now and I think it helps me 
with what I was talking about before, just the idea of making mistakes and losing that pressure of perfection and telling myself, okay, yeah, if I put a colored pencil here and I don't like it, I'll just cover it up later, that's okay. Because I think sometimes as I'm painting and, or I'm just drawing with traditional art and then I'll make a mistake or, I don't wanna say mistake, but I'll do something that makes it look in a way that I don't like or I, I, I feel like it doesn't look good, I will sort of have that reaction like, oh, this piece is ruined, or oh, this doesn't look good, I should start over, or whatever, and I wanna stop doing that, one, because like I said before, you know, art is self-love, and I still think there's always opportunities to make things better and keep on working on stuff, and if I scan the piece and then I put it back on Procreate, I feel like there's a whole new opportunity to add more elements and shift things and change things around. And I think it really boosts another creative urge in me. Because there's a lot of things I love about traditional art, specifically gouache painting. Uh, I used to despise gouache, which is really funny because now it's the only paint that I work in. I occasionally will do watercolor, but in back in the day, I would only use oil paint and uh, I think like acrylic from time to time in watercolor, but I just wouldn't touch gouache, mainly because I think I just didn't understand it. And the fact that it's kind of like layers and you just do flat layers and the blending is not as easy as it is with oil paint. So I think, and, and with watercolor, I feel like you can really go back and add more water and let the paint sort of dissolve. And there is a lot of room for error with that. But with gouache, I didn't understand the fast drawing layering aspect and I just didn't understand it. And I was like, well, if I'm not good at it, I don't want I don't want to use this. Um, but I think making all those pins over the summer really helped me understand the layers and the drawing aspect that gouache really carries with it as a medium. And now I really, really love using gouache because I like the fact that it dried. I feel like I just didn't understand that you had to wait for things to dry. Um, but I really, really love the textures that gouache can give me. Um, and depending on how much water I add to it, there will be sometimes more translucent shades and yeah, I just, I'm really into those textures. A bit of a hard pivot, sorry for the lack of a smooth segue, but I think previously when I was talking about art block, I think the art block also stemmed from the fact that I've been growing a lot on Instagram lately. This morning I hit 5,000 followers, which is absolutely wild, but I think I feel this weird pressure to keep the momentum going and the growth going and mimic you know, other posts that have been popular, then try out new designs and experiment with totally new things, which is what I'm used to doing as an artist. And it's not like I don't think people who look at my art will dislike newer or different content. I think a lot of the people that follow me are super nice and supportive and I kind of get overwhelmed by all the supportive, super nice messages I get. I just think I feel that pressure to replicate it because it's safer in a way but I'm trying to really tell myself that this mentality doesn't serve me or my growth as an artist. I should make the art that I wanna make and not be afraid of you know, the algorithm not pushing my post out to a certain amount of people. Because I think numbers can be a really dangerous game, um, mainly because I feel like if I'm trying to anticipate what the algorithm will push my art out to and making art that doesn't really speak to me, in the long run, I won't be left with art that is meaningful to me and I wanna be doing this for a really long time. So I don't think it's as sustainable to approach it in that way. And it's unfortunate that Instagram is structured the way it is because, you know, capitalism, <laughs> but engagement is structured in the form of numbers and it just makes you sometimes see people as like a quantity, which is a much colder way to perceive individuals who just want to interact with the photos you want to share. But I mean, that's also just the way the app is designed. I mean, I would love to have an app where there's no follower count or hierarchy and people can just like and comment, but there's other fun reactions to art. Like you can maybe like froggy react to something or <laughs> I don't know. But I also don't want to make it seem like I never look at the numbers because I definitely do. And I'm not above monitoring the growth of my platform because at the end of the day, my dream is to become self-employed and be able to sustain myself and earn a living through my art. And in the future, I want to sell ceramics. And I feel like a way a lot of people do that is through social media followings. 
And you know, that's the reality of the situation is that sometimes the more followers you have, the easier it is to make sales and get sponsors and so on. So I'm definitely still trying to grow my platform so I can become self-employed one day, like that's my goal. But I don't want to get lost in the sauce and dangerous numbers game and still make art that's true to myself and not feel outside influences, if that makes any sense to you. And I also think making art friends in the online art community has been super helpful in not getting lost in the number sauce and cold beep boop algorithm mentality. I've done a few art trades with artists I love and like I love getting mail and it's nice to have friends that can support you and just make these connections because you know without my art account I would have never been able to reach these people and form these relationships. But yeah, all my art friends out there, like I'm, I'm so grateful for you all. I think I've hit all these juicy topics that I wanted to touch upon today. I guess the last thing was just the shop update and the new art styles I'm growing into, but I think I talked about that a bit before. I have a bunch of new earring designs that I'm so pumped to create and share with you all. I think when I first started doing earrings, I had like my first batch was like five pairs. And I was like, oh, this is a lot. <laughs> but lately I made 40 pairs. So I've clearly been scaling up but I've been making more limited designs and I think in the beginning it was really exciting too because every single pair I made was totally new and it, there was a lot of experimentation going on. And so for this newest batch, I have I think five or six new designs that I'm gonna try out. I also just kind of want to let myself play with the clay and see what comes out outside of the design. So I'm gonna pre-plan a bunch but then I'm going to have some designs that I sort of just form organically and see what comes out. And I think I'm learning about myself as an artist too. I tend to be really impatient and sometimes lazy with the art I'm making. Like I want an finished product super, super quickly. I don't want to wait for it. And sometimes that impatience and urge to have a finished product makes me not spend as much time on something it makes me not want to plan things out and then at the end of the day or the end of my creation process the art i have i'm not totally satisfied with and so on one hand i think planning things is good but then i think also if i plan too much it makes me kind of lose this connection i have with what i'm producing so i think yeah it's it's a lot of learning about myself and what works the best for me and a lot of different kinds of balancing acts. So I'm really excited about all these new things I'm gonna share with you all. And I think that is it for this super long podcast. If you listen to the end, thank you so much for bearing with me and hearing all of my semi half-baked thoughts about art and social media and things like that. Um, I really appreciate you for hanging out with me for this long and I hope wherever you are and whatever is going on in your life right now you're taking care and things are okay and i will see you in my next one if you haven't done so already i would love if you could like leave a comment down below you can leave me anything at all and also subscribe because i post new videos out every weekend most of the time it's sundays but we see the occasional saturday video and yeah i'll see you in my next one thank you so much bye